Hi everyone, Ben here from Atlas Ordinary. So, I am going to do a 3D pour. So I'm going to pour onto a three dimensional object. So I have this cute little bunny rabbit that I have. It's a, just a ceramic bunny. And I'm hoping it turns out pretty cool. I haven't done a 3D pour before, so this is, sorry, notification I forgot to turn off. But this should be something pretty cool because I haven't done it before and I'm hoping it looks awesome. So first things first, to make it a little bit easier for me, I am going to just dip it in the black. Um, can't get any deeper without it spilling everywhere. I'm just dipping it in the black so it's a little bit easier for me. Now I've got to try to get it back onto this stand without getting too much black all over myself. There we go. So I just dipped it in the black just so it had some covering over it. Um, hopefully it means the other paint will flow a little bit more better. So I have mixed up Extreme Sheen. 24k gold I also have extreme sheen pink tourmaline so they definitely feel thicker tonight but the weather's getting cooler so it's hard to tell why they're feeling thicker I think it's just because it's colder I have aqua marine I just give everything a bit of a stir while I talk about them. And I have Lavender Frost. So it's like Amethyst, but it's a lighter version. So it's called um, Lavender Frost. So they're my four colours. All as I have is a little ceramic bunny that I have put on a stand. And I'm hoping that this turns out pretty cool. I don't know for sure. I have never done it. So we will see. And I think it's just a matter of getting some paint and either pouring it over or drizzling it over. So I see what drizzling does, but I don't think I've... No, I haven't really got enough on here to drizzle. So I'm going to have to do a little pour. And it is quite thick. So we will see how it goes. Gonna to try to get all sides of the bunny rabbit. Now I also have it on um, a canvas just so all the excess that runs off I can use for a painting. Let's try a little bit of aquamarine. So the advantage of doing a pour over a 3D object is you just keep going until what you have looks cool. You don't really have any restrictions with what you're doing. It's just a matter of, I like the look of that, so I'm going to stop there. And it will continue to drizzle and run afterwards, but that doesn't matter. That is the fun of everything. Put a little dab there, there we go. I'm liking him already. And he is completely covered now. So I can stop whenever I want or whenever I'm happy. <clears throat> now for the 24K gold. I'm probably going to do a couple of um, coats or a couple of rounds of colour 
there's one spot I can see that just needs a tiny dab. Just underneath his tail here, his little bum. Or backside. So as you can see, as each colour adds on to it, it kind of pushes other colours down. So it completely changes the way that it looks. And... You can add as little or as much. If you wanted to, you could get a spoon and just spoon it on bit by bit. So you're not adding too much at once. Because sometimes it does actually, when you tilt it right over, that colour kind of does end up taking over and being the dominant colour on the paw. I'm going to go a little bit more purple, or lavender. And I ended up making this paint thickish. So each of these containers has um, 10 grams Extreme Sheen and 10 grams Australian Floetrol. You can use pre-mix paints. You can probably use other pouring mediums. Um, I just wanted to use the flow troll because whatever's left on the canvas I'm going to do a pearl pour so that was my theory for doing it this way and that's why I use these measurements that way I know that it's going to be I made up with the black so the black was um, my two to one ratio which was, no it wasn't, yes it was. I've got my bit of paper right next to me, why am I guessing? So the three colours were 10 grams paint, 10 grams Australian Floetrol. The black is 48 grams paint, 96 grams Australian Floetrol and 22 grams water. So the advantage of that is, this is exactly what I would do if I was to do a pearl pour. So all this paint that ends up on the bottom, I'm just going to get the black, pour it over the top and turn it into a pearl pour piece. So that is the fun advantage of it. So I like the gold, but I don't want the gold to be overly taking over. It's hard to know what I actually want. That's why I say just pouring until you're actually satisfied. That's a little bit better with the gold. It's streaky, not so much um, large parts on him. I think I'm liking the way that this one's turning out. So the paint's still running down him, so he's still going to become a little bit more gold on that edge. But apart from that, the only colour I wouldn't mind having a tiny little bit more of is the lavender. And see how I just did quick little strokes across? That way it won't take over too much. And same with when I, if you pour the, the first bit off him onto the canvas and then streak it across, you get better results than if you poured it straight down onto him. Because you pour it straight down onto him, you get that big, big blob part. When if you wait till it's in the stream, you can go quicker. So the faster you move, the more thinner the lines will be. The slower you move, the more thicker you'll end up getting those lines on him. So he's turning out. <clears throat> Pretty good right now. I don't know if I want to change this anymore or not. You, if, like I said before, you could just get one little dob of colour, wait for one little drop to come out, and adjust him accordingly. So if you you feel like there needs a little bit more of that colour, you can just put that one little drop there 
and it will just run down and make a nice little streak in that spot. I don't think I'm going to change him much more. So I'm calling my rabbit a little him. He looks like a boy. I've got one with his ear down, one ear up and one ear down. That's, that's, that's the girl one, that's the boy one. I don't know, that's just how my brain works. They're quite cute. So, <clears throat> I got these as an after Easter sale. So they're really, they're cheaper. So you get that and then I can save these for next Easter. Or same with, uh, if you wait till Christmas finishes and get some nice ceramic um, ornaments, you can paint them like this. And then when Christmas comes around next year, you just get them out their box and you've already got your painted decorations. Because this is going to take um, a little bit to dry. And then after it's dried, if you want to varnish him to keep him that nice colours, then you would want, you would probably better off to get the ornaments now or give yourself a lot of time for them to be able to be painted, dried, varnished, dried. And yeah, I'm just looking at him as I go and I think I'm happy. There's enough gold on there that makes it look nice and sparkly. But there's also the other three pearl colours. So I believe I'm going to be happy. Now, <laughs> the reason I poured him on top of a little cup. I don't want to touch him and get any paint rub off. So now I can just go and underneath and pick that little cup up and move the whole little thing there. So I can put him in a nice safe spot to dry and become my little centerpiece. But I think this is it. I don't think I'm going to adjust that anymore. So just remember, you want your paints to be thick enough that they stick quite well. If you make them too thin, they will run off and you may even get bare patches that you can see underneath. The other trick is, once you start getting the design you want, make sure you pour off the um, ornament and crisscross it along with these little streaky lines. Otherwise, you're going to get big blobs that go down and it will change the colour, the main part of it. And also, have fun. Really, there's no rule when it comes to this. You just keep going the way that you like. You pick the colours you want. Do I think there's too much of any particular colour? There's a there's probably more gold than I had planned, but I I don't know if I really want to. I wanted him to have a decent amount of gold on him. Just gonna might put one or two drops of pink. I better pick a spot before it drips. There we go. Let's go there. I love his ears. His head looks pretty cool. And yeah, I think I'm I think I'm done. If you're pretty happy, you should be good with that because the more you you can sometimes make it so you're not so happy by keep adding and adding. So once you go, "Yep, I love this." Keep it as it is. So this is still going to keep running and dripping. So I have to find a nice little safe spot for him. But I will bring the camera down and do a close up. And I won't be able to, sh uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get the dried results before I put the video up. We'll see how I go. If I do, I'll show you a picture of the dried results. Otherwise I'll take a photo or I'll put him in one of the beginnings of another video that I do in the future and actually show you how they turned out. But I think that these are cool. So I've got a couple more to do. And hopefully I'm going to keep my eye out at the shops for any other little ceramic um, things I can pour on. The bunnies are absolutely gorgeous. So I got this idea from one of my friends, um, Kath. She has been doing, well, she showed pictures of some of the bunnies and eggs that she did before, um, around Easter time. And I fell in love with it, so I decided that's what I'm going to do. And I can't find her last name because it's recording on my camera, and I need that up there. But Kath, I'll, I'll write you down and send you a message and show you the 
the artwork I did and hopefully you hopefully you like it and approve. So thanks everybody, let's come down for a close-up. So here is a close-up, but I haven't got enough light coming from this direction. So let's get a torch on him. There we go. Look how cool that is. All of these are extreme sheens, so they will be so metallic and shiny. Look at the lovely striping on his ears. Whoops, where's my torch? There we go. His ears have got a nice assortment of colour on them. His back and his little tail has. So I'm trying to get around to show you all sides of, the, of him. Let's show his belly. There we go. So as you can see, it just runs down, gives you cool effects depending on where you put the paint. So that little pink drop there, I put on his cheek and it's just ran down. Other ones are poured from the top. So I'm shuffling my feet, making sure I don't trip over anything. There we go, there's this side. So as you can see, there is lots of gold, but I'm happy with that. I want him to be nice and golden with um, Easter egg colours. That's why I picked these three colours, because they're all quite pastel-y. The um, aquamarine, the pink tauramarine, and the lavender frost. They're very... Um, Easter's always quite pastel-y colours, so I think they actually work quite well with this. And the gold. So, and this is the canvas with all this extra paint that I'm going to do a pearl pour with. Alright, I can turn that torch off now. So, where are we? Hi little fella. So guys, let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure that this is actually going to be really fun to do. And if you've got little animals that, or ornaments that you've got, show me. Because I'd love to see what everyone else does. But the, these were ceramic. So they were quite easy to do. Um... Just plain, basic little ceramic one. He's got his one ear down, one ear up. The other one had two ears up. I just got them from the um, department store. So if you're in Australia, I got them from Kmart. I don't know what you get in America or um, Europe. So, thank you very much. I would love it if people share this video and like and comment. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe because it really helps build my channel and I get to actually show other people what I have. But there we go. Easter Bunny. So thanks very much, everyone. Have a great night and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.